Good morning, welcome back to Thought for the Day. We're going to be looking at uh, Romans chapter 8 and verse uh, 7 this morning. Uh, but before we do that, let's pray. Loving Father, we ask that you'd speak to us this morning uh, by the power of your Spirit, that you would work in our lives, that you would make us more like the Lord Jesus Christ. Help us to understand your word, help us to apply it to ourselves. In Jesus' name, Amen. So I'm going to read to you from Romans, Romans chapter 8, and I'm going to read uh, verse 5 through to 7. Those who live according to the sinful nature have their minds set on what, the, on what that nature desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind of sinful man is death, but the mind controlled by the Spirit is life and peace. The sinful mind is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. So have you ever wondered why your non-Christian friends, whenever you try to speak to them about um, Jesus Christ, about uh, the good news, the gospel, they get um, uh, cross and angry? Why is that? You know, we understand that they're dead in their sin. We've seen that in uh, uh, earlier parts of Romans chapter 8. We looked at that over the weekend. Um, but there seems to be something more to it than that because whenever you speak to them about the things of God you discover that they are getting um, upset about it it gets under their skin it causes them problems so why is that how does that come to be well we're going to think about that question and we're going to answer that in a few moments time um, but let's just have a quick recap of Romans 8 1 to 6 so what we have seen as we've looked through Romans 8 1 to 6 we've discovered that in Christ um, those that have accepted Jesus Christ's salvation uh, his offer of free salvation. They're no longer condemned, so we're not under a death sentence anymore um, because Jesus' death and resurrection has made us legally free and given us the righteousness of Christ so that we are pure in God's sight. So we've gone from being um, sinners uh, who are heading for an eternity without God to being sinners who are accepted by God and accepted because of the righteousness that Jesus Christ has put to their account. Uh, and we discovered as well that this is applied to us by the Holy Spirit. So um, when we become a Christian, when we trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, we're indwelt by the Spirit of God and we can then uh, do the things that God wants us to do. So we've seen that. We've seen that God's Spirit is, is at work in us and we've seen that we've gone from being dead to being alive and from having no peace to having peace so the big question is, why do we need life and peace? You know, as we've said, if if you're dead in your sin, you don't care, do you? You just carry on with your life. You live how you want. You're not interested in the things of, of God. Um, and that certainly is, is true to a large degree. Most people are happy in their sin and they don't care that they are condemned. They're not interested. They don't, they don't even want to listen. Um, they're oblivious. Uh, and they're dead in sin and a corpse, corpse can't feel or, or doesn't feel anything. But yet there is that reaction whenever we speak to our friends about the Lord Jesus Christ and tell the gospel to him. It's not just a reaction of a corpse, not interested. It is a reaction of, of one who is um, well, at war with God, really, isn't it? It's never that simple, you see. Dead to the things of God is true of the non-Christian, but more than that, they are anti the things of God. And that's what verse 7 really underlines for us. It underlines the fact that people aren't just dead in their sin, they are anti-God, they are um, against him. The natural man believes God to be his enemy. He's out to get him, um, to ruin his fun, to stop their personal expression. And we've seen lots of that in recent times, haven't we? Surely God um, wants me to be who I am, you know, in terms of sexuality and in terms of expressing that sexuality. Oh, we've seen that in recent times. Or I believe in a God of love, you know, that one's trotted out regularly. Um, it doesn't matter that it's a fictitious God, a made-up God, but so long as I believe in a God of love, um, well, actually, it's uh, love is God, really, isn't it? That's the that's the thing. And um, what they mean by love is is not uh, the same as what the Bible teaches about love. It's it's a love that is a free for all. Um, and they're afraid of and don't like and actually hate the true God. And, and we discover that as we talk to them about the things of Christ. Um, unless God is at work in them, there is that enmity there. There is that um, dislike of the things of God. Along with that, the law is oppressive and dictatorial. You may have discovered that in yourself before you became a Christian. It, um, you'll do anything to cast off that law, anything to cast off what God said is good. Because as far as you're concerned, it is... Uh, ruining your freedom it is ruining your opportunity to live in the way that you want to do um, but obviously before we become Christians what we do is we 
wrap up as freedom what is actually license. So in, other, in other words, we want to simply do what we want to do. It's an excuse to sin and to sin with impunity. And now the one who does not have God at work in them wants nothing to do with God. They detest everything that he stands for. Uh, and the evidence for that is rejecting the gospel. You know, if we really uh, were interested in God, we would give the gospel a fair listening. We'd give the good news of Jesus a fair listening. But what we've discovered, um, and we knew this before we became Christians, that we weren't interested in hearing the gospel. The gospel to us was like an alien message. It um, it just simply got our backs up. But first of all, it says that we are sinners, and we don't want to know that we're sinners. We want to know that we're doing okay and that we will be okay. Um, we, you know, surely doing enough to please God. He, God's you know, to overlook all of our issues. We, we kind of true, view it in that way. And what we're doing is we're excusing ourselves and trying to avoid dealing with the, with the true God. Uh, so the evidence is there then that there is no peace in people's lives, and that's the point, isn't it? The the reason why we need life and peace is because we are dead in our sin um, and because we don't have peace. Before knowing Christ, we are at turmoil. We struggle with everything, and everything that God does we view as being against us um, and not for us. We uh, struggle because we view God in such a, a heavily negative way. So if you're not a Christian then, this morning, what you need to do is stop fighting God. Now, that sounds a lot uh, easier than it actually is, because... Uh, whenever we, you hear someone talking about God, the immediately your barriers start going up. But you need to start looking instead to see where God is at work in your life. You need to turn towards him and see what uh, God will do in your life. Now, um, the Holy Spirit will come uh, come in you and move you to do that. If you listen to this and it means nothing to you, the Holy Spirit isn't working in you. But the Holy Spirit is at work in many ways. And one of the ways is, is he stirs people up to hear the gospel. He stirs them up to listen, to hear about the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're in any way stirred about this, you're in any way thinking about this, then uh, don't just dismiss that, but turn towards God and seek him and the Lord will help you. Now, if you are a Christian then you shouldn't be surprised when you tell the gospel to your friends that not only are they not interested, but they're actually angry and cross with you. Now, I know that that means that you're going to think twice about sharing the good news, but you need to remember that it's a work of God. So when you share the good news, don't be surprised if you get a hostile reaction, but don't stop sharing it because you get the hostile reaction. You need to continue to share. You need to continue to uh, tell the good news of Christ and be prepared that there will be some of that angst towards you. It may not materialise in um, persecution as it does in some places, but it may well mean that your friendship is at risk. Now, a lot of us will stop witnessing because of that, so we need to learn and understand that we need to be praying that God will be at work. And so when we begin the conversation that he is at work in that person, and then we can speak plainly and clearly about the Lord Jesus Christ, trusting and knowing that he is the one who will do the work uh, behind it. So, uh, what have we learned today? Well, we've learned that we, when we speak to people about the Lord Jesus Christ, we need to understand that there will be a negative reaction. Um, and that when we have that negative reaction, uh, then we can pray and trust that God will work in that. The worst thing, of course, is when you speak to your friends and they are indifferent. Um, that's a sad place for them to be in and it's a sad place for us to be able to work from because it's they just walk away and just don't care. Well, what we need to trust is that that's not actually the truth under the surface. Under the surface, there is a, a, a animosity towards God. Um, and what we want is that the Spirit works and turns that animosity towards his good in, in the sense that it makes people reach out for the Lord Jesus Christ. So pray for that today. Pray and, and work towards God, um, speaking into your life and into the lives of others. Uh, let's pray. Loving Father, as we've looked at your word this morning we recognize that there is a privileged position to be in the Lord Jesus Christ to know our sins forgiven to know um, that we have a future and that we have a hope uh, to know that we have life and peace um, but Lord we pray that you would be at work in the lives of those that we know already that do not know you that at uh, this moment are anti you that you're your enemies we thank you that Christ died for his enemies and we praise you Lord that uh, that includes us and so we ask, Lord, that you do a powerful work in the lives of others this day. For Jesus' sake, amen.